I love reading other people's acknowledgement sections. It's the first thing I go to um, whenever I'm reading a thesis. Well, look, I have to admit that I did my acknowledgements in a bit of a last minute flurry. A PhD, we mark it as a work of someone. It is actually the work of a community. It's the work of a team. They tell you so much about a person and you get this insight into the way they express themselves. Writing the acknowledgements, you think about all of the challenges that you go through when you're doing your PhD. A really fantastic time. We found such great bonds. We all hung out with each other. We worked hard. It's a, it's a magical feeling. The acknowledgements is an ode to that process and to that trust and building and support network. And is it heartfelt or is it funny or is it serious? Um, and it often documents, you know, the, the rocky path that many people, almost everybody has during a PhD. <laughs> I have my printed copy of thesis. Uh, actually, I borrowed it from my supervisor. In the morning, I said to him, hey, can I borrow my own thesis because I'm gonna read it out in front of camera. To my wonderful family, who literally after a decade of this still have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I'm a first generation uh, university student and um, my family were very supportive, but it was really a mystery, I think, to them. Even if they don't understand, they're the ones that you come home to and you're like, oh gosh. Um, you know, it was a terrible day and it's your family who, you know, for, for the lucky people who will really be there to support you. Arguably, I find acknowledgement of a thesis is always the hardest part to write, which is true. Um, to Lassa for reminding me that science is meant to be fun and explosive and that we always have time for a coffee break. So the bit about explosiveness, uh, so we... <laughs> uh, yeah, hmm, how to, how to put this without breaching health and safety. <laughs> I wish to acknowledge a group of guys without whose full involvement this project would never have gotten off the ground, the Chuffs. They're these goofy black birds that get up to all sorts of antics. Uh, they're hilarious to watch. Uh, they're very comical creatures and they interact with each other and it's very, very entertaining and I do love them dearly. I'm forever debted to my supervisor, Brian Schmidt. You started out with a lot less gray hair than when I started, so I'm not sure what that says about me as a student. You go through trials and tribulations and successes over a period of that three to four years. And so you really see an evolution in the science, the field and the relationship. And here was a bit of a physical manifestation of that change over time. Thank you to Chapton, the bubble tea shop on campus. So me could finish my PhD. Uh, some people love uh, go for a run, go for cycling. Oh, for me, my, my, my hobby is to go bubble tea. I'm proud of it. On the near fatal occasion, GGO flew at me with such a vengeance, I leapt back, breaking the branch from which my rope ladder hung. It was a very, very scary moment. I was at least 20 meters off the ground and I literally plunged, I don't know how far, several meters, thinking I was gonna die but the rope again caught on a lower branch and I was jolted uh, into safety. On a personal note, I must acknowledge my family. My parents inspired me to enter science and have supported me throughout, especially my mother who's hosted me in periods of country hopping. Um, so I owe everything to my parents. They're both amazing scientists. I was doing field work with my parents from the age of five upwards. Maybe it's not so much that I wouldn't have got into science, but I didn't have a choice but to go into science. <laughs> to my beautiful, wondrous, deeply chaotic children, this would have been a lot quicker without you, but I wouldn't change a thing. I had two children in the course of doing my PhD, not entirely because of that, but uh, my PhD went for a very, very long time. And one person I should actually when I look at this mention is my one of my supervisors, Julie Moran Ferron. She very sadly last year died of cancer. Um, and she was a fantastic role model and a fantastic scientist. And I think she was taken from us in her prime. She was only in her early 40s. And um, yeah, it was a big loss for me personally and for science. I was her first PhD student. Um, um, yeah. My husband and I, or my now husband, 
um, and I wrote our PhDs at the same time. So it was a lot of late nights, a lot of um, proofreading each other's chapters. To my lovely wife, Emma, at first you thought I was a loud, obnoxious American. You were right, but despite all of my flaws, you've always been there for me. Her love and dedication then and today is still astounding. Uh, and I'm, I, I cannot express words how much she means to me. I'm glad I finished my PhD. I'm glad I finished a hard PhD. And now I'm also glad that uh, I had my supervisors going through this journey with me. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I can't believe that people let us loose in the lab and let us follow our, our scientific curiosity. I guess one thing that strikes me reading these two personal acknowledgements is how little that's changed. These are people who were important to me then and important to me now. A lot of these people who along the way help us into our path academically, uh, mentally, um, career-wise, really is why I'm here today.